Fallout 76 players are creating some incredible camp builds in 2023, as the game has evolved throughout the years and the camp building system has been updated with more features. In today's video we're taking a look at some of the best player creations built so far this year. The third showcase in the series, today we're looking at a varied selection of different builds, featuring a castle on the White Spring Golf Course, an enormous mining town, a rabbit mech, two law friendly settlements, and a bank heist. Before finishing up with a tour of a group camp built by five Japanese camp builders. But diving straight in, up first today we have the abandoned mining town built by Drago in adventure mode. This raider settlement has been updated and changed extensively throughout the years, but the core theme has remained the same, and it's still one of the most imposing adventure builds I think I've seen, and a great advert for how being conservative with certain items can help you get the most out of your camp budget. Built into the side of a cliff face overlooking the Toxic Valley, it's definitely a scrappy build with multiple towers, guard posts, and walkways leading up to the cliff face to reach different parts of the camp, which lends itself really well to the story behind the build, originally a simple mining facility overtaken by a gang of raiders post-war, adding new sections and defences periodically. It comes with quite the view of Appalachia, and although appreciating the full scale of this camp is better from a distance, it is full of some really creative smaller points of interest. So let's take a closer look around. Utilising broken variants of camp items like the water tower, the Nuka Cola billboard, and partially built wall sections. An easy to miss robotic cat protects its catch, and next to a gruesome cooking station, a custom built Raider Wender Wagon. On one of the central platforms you can find an organ, and near the main entrance a custom built bit of mining equipment, with stairs leading up the back of the tower, and in the front a collection point for rocks. Workbenches are spread throughout the camp, appreciating the spectacular views while you work, and Beckett's bar on the ground level has had a bit of an overhaul. Finishing up, let's check out the mine itself. The entrance to the mine is located in the Bloody Wool Nest, on the ground level, and inside we find the Raider's Treasure Hall. An amazing camp, but definitely one of the best Raider builds I think I've seen. But moving on to the second build for today, we're heading over to the White Spring Golf Course, to check out the Balmoral and Adventure Mode camp built by Thor Odin Stortir. Built over a bridge leading up from the golf course, Thor is actually a set designer for the Wasteland Theatre Company. Performing Shakespeare and classic theatre live in the Wasteland, you can actually see them on Twitch and find their productions here on YouTube. A big part of that of course is the sets, with some incredible recreations of different theatres. The Globe, the Combat Zone from Fallout 4, and perhaps my personal favourite being this recreation of the Vaults Theatre here in London. We will be back to look at some of these sets in a future showcase, and you can find all their links in this video's description. Thor doesn't just build theatre sets of course, and the Balmoral isn't actually based on any existing location, although it definitely reminds me of some locations you can find in Venice. The walls of the structure are perfectly blended with the existing bridge, and taking a closer look, there's a lot of different items used here. The pit build set, Helvetia window canopies, Wavy Willard's wall posts, and a sprinkling of vines working really well together. Up top, the rest in pieces roof set really completes the look. Heading inside, let's take a look around. The bridge itself is part of the interior of course, and managing to line up all the wall sections on the exterior was definitely no easy feat. An extensive library fills one corner, with a decorated seating area and room full of paintings upstairs. Checking back at night time and the warm lighting from the lanterns and wall sconces was definitely a great choice. Nothing too overbearing, and here's how it looks from the outside. Overall, a really unique build, incredibly well executed. Up next we have another camp build by Simba, with the Beaver House. As the name suggests, this place is absolutely teeming with them, and they're content to run around the water's edge and apparently glitch into the air at incredible speed. Built on the water itself, Simba has gone for a law friendly look for this settlement, decorated with vines and thematic furniture options. As well as incorporating a water mill and water purifier inside, the build is separated into sections with a central tower containing workbenches, and overall it seems to have been partially reclaimed by nature. Getting to each section of the build is possible via a series of floated benches, which are acting as a pathway. Probably best not to sleep in this plant, as it will actually throw you directly into the water itself. A really nice detail was this custom made easel. Attach an existing painting to a totem to create the look, and heading up into the tower, Simba has set down some custom merged workbenches, like this chemistry bench merged with the cultist's bed. The camp looks great at night, using a mix of warm and bright lighting, inside and outside of the build. It's another great camp by Simba, who's been absolutely powering through them recently. For now though, it's time to say goodbye to the camp and the glitchy beavers, as we move on to number 4. We have Monster 76's Bank Heist, which is built in a custom world. Now we did actually feature shots of this in a recent lore video, exploring the story behind the sleeper agents of Project Somnus, but it definitely needed a longer tour. Stacked columns and custom made glass revolving doors take us inside, and the interior of this structure and the general theme was actually based on the bank heist scene from the beginning of The Dark Knight. Monty did a great job of replicating the scene from the film, with the bank manager's office and a custom made counter in front of the entrance to the actual vault. 
and just like in the movie, clown robbers but this time with a fallout twist. Heading inside to the vault to get working on those doors. One hostage isn't exactly what they seem though. And just like in the actual lore you can find in Fallout 76, an unassuming hiker was actually a sleeper agent. Their innate combat abilities activating just in time to forward the attempted robbery with apparent ease. Finishing up at the bank though, let's move on to number 5, with a build by Cleveland. Another scrappy wasteland settlement, Mars Cabin is located at a popular pre-existing camp spot in the Savage Divide. Home to an extremely butch character model, Ma, her gallified husband and son Joe are guns for hire operating out of a ramshackle outpost, cobbled together with a variety of different materials looted from the wasteland. I really like how the destroyed camp set looks with the pre-existing shack found here, and it's finished off nicely with chain link fences and hanging curtains. Powered by mole rats and packed with small details, let's take a closer look around. Out back we have another cat, but this time it's atop a scarecrow, and in front of a partially intact suit of power armour, human remains buried in the earth, apparently unsuccessful in making it to the power armour in time. It isn't the biggest structure, so the interior space is jam-packed with stocked shelves and supplies. Watch your step as we head in here to look at the crafting area. Some nicely merged items in this section, with this modified coffee machine combined with a water cooler. And after a hard day's work, outdoor seating to take a load off, in front of a completely safe mound of burning nuclear waste. Really nice build by Cleveland, but moving on to the penultimate build, or should I say builds for today, as we have something a bit different. At the beginning of May, five Japanese camp builders hosted an event in-game, inviting players to visit their latest group camp. Featuring builds by Gucci, Construction, Onion Takaman, Akane and Hitoka, I was kindly invited to come along and check them out. After a long waiting queue to join the world, it turned out to be quite the event, with a constant stream of players dropping in to check out their work. And it's probably one of the craziest servers I think I've been to as well, with pretty much every camp I visited needing a quick tour to take it all in. We'll be back to see some of these in a future showcase, but the main event of course were the five builds. And while they were all pretty close by, with most of them just a short walk away from each other, each was drastically different. So kicking things off, let's take a look first at the Lake Temple by Gucci. A great spot for the build with it perfectly illuminated in the water, with its design separated into a small courtyard, leading to a shrine inside. But getting a bit closer, what really stuck out to me was the roof work. Starting at the bottom then, all of this is custom made. All the pillars, roof awnings and the supporting structure, made using hunter's lodge tables, stack posts, stack cabinets, coffins, and even a bed for the centre of the structure. I was pretty blown away just from that, but heading up it gets even better. To create the incredible shape, Gucci has stacked wall arches on both sides, and these are actually double layered as well to enhance it further, and technically it must have been a challenge to pull off. Inside the interior it's pretty small, with Scarberry Shrine getting quite the upgrade, and as for lighting, Gucci used sparse warm lighting throughout which really enhanced what was already an incredible build. Just over the hill is where we find the second camp, a little marché by Hitoka. Another great location, the build is sat atop a small rocky outcrop, surrounded by a river. Accessed via a custom made bridge and staircase, heading up we find a small market store set outside the house. I really like the colour palette Hitoka chose for the camp, and it really fitted the theme. The curios selling a variety of different items and oddities. Everything from paintings, miniatures to flowers, and even Kwanzaa corns making the cut particularly like the poster bed being worked into the design for this stall. It's pretty colourful in here too, with a small kitchen area and fireplace on one side, another tiny detail but using the heavy weapons display to hold the wood pile was a touch. Heading upstairs, Hitoka made the most of the space by creating a custom set of second stairs using coffins to reach the top level. This is a feature with each of these builds, but the views from this location looking down over Watoga were pretty spectacular. Overall, a lovely build by Hitoka, and next we're off to see the Wood Deck Cafe, built by Onion Takaman. As the name suggests, it's a small cafe, featuring different areas of outdoor seating, a bar inside, and a covered veranda decorated with vines. Heading inside though, let's take a look at the bar area. Made using bar pieces both on the ground and being floated, Onion has included a fully stocked shelf for customers, and heading past some wall decorations and out to the veranda, it's a perfect spot to chill out and relax. Doubling down on the natural vibes of a selection of flower vases off to one side, and finally we go out onto the terrace for more seating and an even better view. Up next we have a build by Akane, a rustic cafe this time around, built on top of another lake. Found at the bottom of a small mountainous area, the camp is separated into three different towers. Heading over the walkway and into the main tower is where we find most of the seating, with a grand piano sat down in the middle. And in the large tower off to the side is where we find the kitchen area. Some nice mergers in here, but overall, I really like the unique shape of this build throughout. Last but definitely not least, we have construction, with the triangle house. 
From a distance, this camp immediately sticks out, but on closer inspection, the roofwork here is just something else. Perfectly symmetrical stacked wall fascias, broken up by glass wall sections in the centre, with some of these opened up to allow air in. Like Gucci's work on his temporal roof, the one here is equally impressive from a technical standpoint, and creates an incredibly unique looking structure. The front of the build has a balcony which can also be used to access the top floor area, with some submerged organs framing the doorway into the living room and kitchen. Heading inside there, it's pretty sparse, with a cool merge for the centerpiece, a submerged fireplace merged with a vault tech plant. And off to the side, another fantastic set of mergers here, with some speakers and DJ decks. Overlooking this is the bedroom and the hot tub, and yeah, this is quite possibly the best view of the bunch, sitting in here to take it all in. But that brings us to the end of the group camp tour. Thanks to all the builders for showing me around and hosting a really nice event to show off their camps. If you want to check out their other work, then you can find them on Twitter, and all their links in the video description. Finally for today, and this one again is a bit different, we have Bad Notions vs Duke Destro, with a different kind of group camp. Using a custom world to change build radius settings, their combined builds are practically touching, and also move around a lot. As we see the latest episode in an Unstoppables themed build series, Dr Zorbo promised to return to Earth after a previous tour, which included testing his ship's new weapons on an unsuspecting clown. And he's back, but this time with friends. This time we find soldiers and tanks battling one of Duke's more grotesque creations, the human centipede, uh, making quick work a bit, and posing for photos was perhaps a little bit ill-advised. As this was an Easter special build, Dr Zorbo revealed his latest creation, a rabbit mech, and things went steadily downhill from here. No mercy! Take this! Keep your head down! With that, we've reached the end of today's showcase. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and definitely let me know in the comments which of these camps was your favourite. We'll be back with future camp showcases with one normally every month or so, so please consider subscribing to help the channel grow, and to ensure you don't miss any future videos. Special thanks to the builders showcased in today's video. You can find other builds by Drago, Bad Notions, Cleveland, Duke Destro and Monster76 here on the Uranium Fever channel with dedicated playlists for each creator. Please also consider checking out Simba, Gucci, Construction, Akane, Onion Takaman and Hitoka on Twitter to stay up to date with their builds and what they're working on. And we'll also be back to look at more work by the Wasteland Theatre Company who have just announced their next production, Coriolanus. I'm looking forward to seeing what they create for that, and their Twitter, YouTube and Twitch links are in the video description. But with that said, I am off. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.